Prepare yourself to be astonished as we explore the sinister realm of teenage relationships that have gone awfully astray. In this video, we will rank the most shocking instances where teenage girls have committed unimaginable acts. However, the narrative doesn't conclude there. We will also provide our reactions to their lifelong prison sentences and scrutinize how the justice system has reacted to these devastating offenses. This video is not intended for those easily disturbed. Number 1. Ezra McCandless Ezra McCandless gained notoriety in 2018 for the savage murder of her boyfriend, Alexander Woodworth. McCandless, who was only 22 at the time, was born in Missouri and raised in Nebraska. She had a reputation for being artistic and had a passion for music and poetry. However, she also struggled with mental health problems and had made multiple suicide attempts. On March 22, 2018, McCandless arrived at a farmhouse near Eau Claire, Wisconsin, covered in mud, blood, bruises, and without shoes. She claimed to have been attacked and needed medical help. However, her story quickly fell apart when investigators discovered Woodworth's brutally assaulted body on a dirt road near the farmhouse. McCandless was subsequently charged with his murder. During her trial, she argued that she had acted in self-defense, claiming that Woodworth had attacked her during a sexual encounter in his car. McCandless stated that his violence escalated, forcing her to defend herself with a knife. Prosecutors, however, contended that McCandless had planned the murder in advance, citing her history of manipulative behavior and lies. In February 2021, McCandless was found guilty of first-degree intentional homicide and received a life sentence without parole. The judge described the murder as brutal and cruel and criticized McCandless for her lack of remorse. Although McCandless sobbed upon hearing the verdict, she remained silent. But before sentencing, she wrote a letter to the judge expressing regret for causing pain to Woodworth's family and claiming she acted in self-defense. McCandless also discussed her struggles with mental health, including being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. The case drew attention due to McCandless's seemingly unassuming appearance and artistic background, which made her an improbable suspect for such a brutal crime. The trial highlighted the complex relationship between mental health issues and their potential for tragic consequences. Number 2. Nakisha James Nakisha James, an 18-year-old teenager from San Bernardino, California, had her life take a dark turn on December 18, 2015, when she killed her boyfriend, Dorian Powell. The brutal incident occurred during a house party after a dispute, where James became upset with Powell, leading to a physical altercation. She attacked him multiple times. After the incident, James fled the scene, but later admitted to the crime via a Facebook post. In her post, she explained that they had a serious fight which escalated, resulting in her grabbing a knife and fatally stabbing him. She expressed remorse and apologized to Powell, expressing love and regret for what had transpired. The police were able to locate James and apprehend her for her involvement in Powell's killing. During her trial, James pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and was sentenced to 16 years to life in state prison in May 2017. The judge highlighted the severity of the crime and the impact it had on Powell's family and loved ones when handing down the sentence. James's reaction to her sentencing remains unclear. However, the case has gained nationwide attention with many using it as an example of the dangers of domestic violence and advocating for more support for victims and survivors. It has also drawn attention to the issue of youth violence, with people questioning the factors that may have led James, a young woman, to commit such a violent act. Some believe a history of abuse might have been a contributing factor, while others speculate about possible mental health issues. Despite the numerous unanswered questions, one thing is certain, the tragic events of that December night forever altered the lives of both James and Powell. While justice was served through James's sentencing, the scars left by this crime will likely endure for many years to come. Number 3. Kaylee Turnipseed In October 2021, a teenager named Kaylee Turnipseed gained attention when she was charged with first-degree murder in Greensboro, North Carolina. The victim was her boyfriend but his name was not disclosed due to his age. Allegedly, Turnipseed killed her boyfriend and then asked her friends to help clean up the crime scene. The police were informed by one of the friends who was asked to assist. 
The victim's body was found in a wooded area, leading to Turnipseed's arrest. She reportedly confessed to the crime when taken into custody, but the motive remains unknown. Turnipseed was denied bond due to suspicion of attempting to cover up the murder. The investigation is ongoing, and Turnipseed's background is undisclosed, leaving uncertainty about what drove her to commit such a dreadful act. In December 2021, Turnipseed appeared in court and pleaded guilty to first-degree murder. She was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. The judge commented that her actions were calculated and unremorseful. Turnipseed displayed no emotion upon hearing her sentence. Her family and friends were present but declined to speak to the media. This case has attracted attention from the local community and beyond as people wonder about the factors that led a young woman to commit such a horrific crime. Some experts speculate that Turnipseed may have struggled with untreated mental health issues. Mental health challenges are not uncommon among young individuals, especially during turbulent teenage years. Sadly, many young people do not seek help, and their issues can escalate, leading to harm inflicted upon themselves or others. The case of Kaylee Turnipseed serves as a tragic reminder of the importance of seeking assistance when dealing with mental health problems. It highlights the consequences of violence and the urgency of getting support. Hopefully, justice has been served for the victim's family, and Turnipseed's punishment will deter others from similar actions. Number 4. Jody Arias Jody Arias gained a reputation for the brutal murder of her former partner, Travis Alexander, which made her notorious. She was born on July 9, 1980, in Salinas, California, and had a difficult upbringing in a troubled home. Her parents were addicts who often quarreled, and her mother was emotionally abusive while her father was absent. Arias met Travis Alexander in 2006, and they entered into a tumultuous romantic relationship. Their time together was marked by jealousy, arguments, and intermittent breakups, often due to their long-distance setup between their homes in Arizona and California. On June 4, 2008, Alexander's roommates discovered his lifeless body in his Mesa, Arizona home. He had suffered a violent assault involving a knife and a gun. A friend of Alexander, who knew Arias, held a negative opinion of her, remarking on the turbulent nature of the couple's relationship and Arias's problematic behavior. The police investigation deemed Arias as the main suspect, despite her initial denials. Eventually, she admitted to killing Alexander but claimed it was in self-defense. However, the court presented evidence indicating premeditation, including explicit photos of the couple taken on the day of the murder, suggesting their relationship played a role in the crime. In 2013, Arias was found guilty of first-degree murder. In the ensuing penalty phase, the jury failed to agree on the death penalty, resulting in Arias receiving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. The trial attracted significant media attention, becoming one of the most widely watched criminal trials in recent memory. Throughout the trial, Arias displayed a range of emotions, from crying and sobbing to expressing anger and defiance. She participated in various media interviews, including one with Inside Edition while in jail. During the interview, she claimed to be a victim of domestic violence, alleging that Alexander had been abusive towards her. Jody Arias's name will forever be linked to her horrific crime and the sensational trial that followed. Her case serves as a cautionary example of how jealousy, anger, and obsession can lead to devastating consequences. Despite her self-defense claims, the evidence presented in court clearly established her responsibility for the murder of Travis Alexander, ensuring she will spend the remainder of her life incarcerated. Number 5. Michelle Carter Michelle Carter a teenager from Massachusetts, became well known for her involvement in the death of her boyfriend, Conrad Roy III. Born on August 11, 1996, in Plainville, Massachusetts, Carter grew up in a middle-class family and struggled with anxiety and depression. Despite her mental health issues, she led a seemingly normal life and was a cheerleader at King Philip Regional High School. In 2014, Carter started exchanging text messages with Roy, who also battled mental health problems. The messages between them became increasingly dark, with Carter at one point encouraging Roy to take his own life. On July 12, 2014, Roy followed Carter's suggestion and died from carbon monoxide poisoning in his truck. Carter's crime was not an active one, but a passive one. She was charged with involuntary manslaughter for her role in Roy's death, 
with prosecutors arguing that her texts were the cause. Her trial in June 2017 drew significant attention from legal experts and mental health advocates. On June 16, 2017, Judge Lawrence Moniz found Carter guilty. She was sentenced to 15 months in jail and five years of probation, but remained free during her appeal process. In February 2019, the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court upheld her conviction and ordered her to begin serving her sentence immediately. Carter's case sparked a heated debate on the criminalization of speech and the responsibilities of individuals in online communication. Some argued that her texts were protected by the First Amendment and she should not be held criminally responsible for Roy's death. Others believed her actions were reprehensible and warranted punishment. Carter expressed shock and disbelief at her conviction and sentencing, claiming she was being punished for her words and that she did not believe she caused Roy's death. She was visibly upset during her sentencing, sobbing throughout. Number 6. Martina Oganowska Martina Oganowska, a teenager, killed Philip Jaskowicz shortly after they started dating. The incident took place after a night out at a bar where Oganowska's mother and two friends were present. An argument between Oganowska and Jaskowitz in his car about his driving escalated when Jaskowitz began touching her inappropriately. Oganowska claimed that Jaskowitz grabbed her by the neck and pushed her, causing her to fall. He then continued to touch her inappropriately and made threats. Around 5 a.m. while parked, Oganowska attacked Jaskowitz with a knife while he was distracted by his phone. She ran away with the knife and her friends followed, unaware of the severity of the situation. Jaskiewicz was discovered dead by a member of the public approximately two hours later. During the trial, it was revealed that Oganowska was fully aware of her actions and left Jaskiewicz to die alone. She had taken the knife with her and turned herself into the police at the same time Jaskiewicz's body was found. Although Oganowska denied any intention to kill or possessing a weapon, she was found guilty by a jury and sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 17 years. Her defense team argued that she had previously experienced abuse as a young teenager, which caused significant post-traumatic stress disorder and made her hypersensitive to triggers. However, the judge described her actions as premeditated and unprovoked, highlighting her previous conviction for assault. Jaskiewicz's family expressed their devastation over the loss, and Oganowska displayed no emotion during the sentencing. This case has led to discussions about the guidance followed by prosecutors when a victim becomes a defendant. Number 7. Lavana May Lavana May, 19 years old at the time, was charged with taking someone's life in 2016. She allegedly convinced her boyfriend and a friend to assist her in fatally beating a man whom she claimed had assaulted her. It was discovered that Lavana May had a troubled childhood, having spent time in foster care and gotten into trouble with the law before. She was described as a troubled and vulnerable young woman who had been taken advantage of by the man they targeted. The crime committed by Lavana May and her accomplices, Jack Williams and Kaylee Woods, was particularly brutal. They lured Kyle Yule, 20 years old, to a park in Kent, England, where they attacked him using knives, a screwdriver, and a broken bottle. The victim suffered 140 injuries, including a severed spinal cord, and died at the scene. Following a four-week trial, Lavana May, Jack Williams, and Kaylee Woods were all found guilty of murder and sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 20 years. The judge described the murder as senseless and barbaric, highlighting Lavana May's role as the driving force behind the assault and her accomplice's active participation. The judge also stated that the victim, Kyle Yule, was not an assaulter, contradicting Lavana May's claim, and that the attack was unprovoked. Lavana May displayed little remorse for her actions after the trial. She made threatening comments towards the victim's family and even smiled and laughed as she was escorted from the courtroom after sentencing. The case of Lavana May, Jack Williams, and Kaylee Woods serves as a tragic example of how young individuals can get involved in violent and purposeless crimes. It also underscores the devastating impact these crimes have on the victim's families and loved ones. Despite Lavana May's difficult upbringing, it does not excuse the violent and atrocious crime she committed. The murder of Kyle Yule was incredibly brutal and unprovoked, leading to the convictions of Lavana May and her accomplices. The minimum 20-year prison sentence may seem harsh, but it reflects the severity of their actions. 
Lavana May's lack of remorse and threatening behavior towards the victim's family is concerning. This lack of empathy underscores the need for education and support to prevent similar crimes in the future. Overall, the case of Lavana May, Jack Williams, and Kaylee Woods demonstrates the destructive and devastating consequences that arise from senseless and violent crimes. Number 8. Ruth Commande. Ruth Commande, a former beauty queen from Kenya, gained national attention in 2018 when she was convicted for killing her boyfriend. The incident occurred in Nairobi on September 20, 2015. Kamande was born on November 20, 1994, and grew up in Naivasha. She attended Bishop Gatimu and Gandu Girls High School before pursuing a degree in business information technology at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology, Jekuat. The murder of Kamande's boyfriend, Farid Muhammad, shocked the country. They had been dating for a year and got into an argument about text messages on Muhammad's phone. Kamande attacked him with a kitchen knife. During the trial, she claimed self-defense, stating that Muhammad had attempted to assault her. However, the prosecution argued that Kamande acted out of jealousy after discovering Muhammad's flirtation with another woman. In July 2018, after a lengthy trial, Kamande was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. The judge ruled that her lack of remorse and attempts to cover up the crime were evidence against her. Her case sparked a nationwide debate on the death penalty, with some arguing that it was too severe for a young woman who could potentially change her life. Others believed that Commanda deserved full accountability for her heinous crime. Upon receiving her sentence, Commanda broke down in tears, begging for mercy and expressing regret to Muhammad's family. Her case serves as a tragic reminder of the dangers of domestic violence and the consequences of taking the law into one's own hands. While it has generated controversy and discussion, it is crucial to remember the impact of Muhammad's death on his loved ones. Number 9. Shayna Hubers Shayna Hubers, an American woman, gained notoriety in 2012 for killing her boyfriend, Ryan Poston. Hubers grew up in a wealthy family in Lexington, Kentucky, and met Poston on Facebook. They started dating in 2011 and were together for 18 months before the incident. Huber struggled to accept the breakup and became obsessed with Poston. On October 12, 2012, Hubers called 911 to report that she had shot Poston six times. When the police arrived at Poston's home in Highland Heights, Kentucky, they found him dead. Hubers was arrested and charged with his murder. During the trial, Hubers claimed self-defense, alleging that Poston had been abusive. However, evidence suggested that Hubers had planned the murder. Hubers had sent several text messages to friends prior to the incident, expressing her intention to kill Poston. The multiple shots she fired, including one to his face, indicated premeditation. In 2015, Hubers was found guilty and sentenced to 40 years in prison, but the sentence was overturned. A new trial was ordered, and in 2018, Hubers was once again found guilty and sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 14 years. Hubers displayed emotion and denial of guilt when the sentence was handed down, breaking down in tears and writing a letter to the judge claiming innocence. However, the judge dismissed her claims, citing overwhelming evidence against her. Poston's death devastated the community, and Huber's calculated and brutal actions, along with her feeble justifications, were deeply unsettling. Though she may have the chance for parole in the future, her life will never be the same. Number 10. Kamiya Gamut In 2014, Kamiya Gamut was convicted of first-degree murder for the brutal killing of her boyfriend, Marcel Hill. The crime occurred in Jackson, Michigan, where the couple resided at the time. Despite Gamut's assertion that she acted in self-defense, the jury found her guilty. Throughout the trial, the prosecution presented evidence that contradicted Gamut's version of events. They revealed that Hill had sustained multiple stab wounds from different weapons, including a knife and a stiletto heel. These injuries were severe and ultimately led to his death. The prosecution argued that Gamut was responsible for Hill's murder and that her self-defense claim lacked credibility. The jury agreed with this argument and convicted Gamut of first-degree murder. As a result, she received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. 
The severity of Gamet's crime and the prosecution's portrayal of her as a violent individual who posed a threat to society contributed to the harshness of her sentence. Her defense attorney, Anthony Redwayzo, filed an appeal in 2015, asserting that the court had made several errors during the trial, such as allowing prejudicial evidence against his client. Unfortunately, the appeal was unsuccessful, and Gamet's conviction and sentence were upheld. Following the appeal, Gamet expressed disappointment with the verdict, maintaining her innocence. She argued that the evidence presented in court did not definitively prove her guilt and criticized the fairness of her trial, claiming her defense team was ineffective. Despite her protests, the court's decision ultimately stood, and Gamet remains incarcerated. The case garnered significant attention due to the heinous nature of the crime and the severity of the punishment, sparking discussions about self-defense laws and the role of the justice system in protecting victims of domestic violence.